Hey, all right. Another rousing rendition of uh, what's Shane T unboxing today. This will be my second unboxing video, and I have kind of an exciting uh, piece of equipment to unveil today. So I thought I would share it with everybody. So I have set up a little camera stand here to use so that I don't have to break my arm and wiggle and make everyone sick while they're trying to watch it. And now that even though I know Paul Yaw has quit Facebook because he's a pussy, he's had the chance to see my face, I'll make sure to put it on YouTube and tag him on it. So I will go ahead and, without further ado, which of course is a fancy word meaning bullshit, uh, I will attempt to clamp the camera into the camera stand. Right on. All right, and here's my unboxing video. Okay, so here's my box. I have made the, I made the terrible unboxing faux pas of, uh, of uh, opening the box before I started the video, but it is what it is, so I don't have to cut the box open. But what we have here is a GPS slash INS from Obsidian Motorsport Group. Uh, so it comes with this, obviously, this nice, nicely packaged uh, box with a warning label on it that says, you know, handle only with uh, static free gloves and all that shit, which Sander very well knows no one in the racing industry is going to do that. But it's a nice warning. Inside the box, we have a uh, nice foam packaging, of course, some awesome Obsidian Motorsport Group uh, decals to use. And most importantly, here is the GPS slash INS unit. Now, some of you might be asking, what is a GPS slash INS unit and why do I need one? Uh, so the, the reason that this device is going to be very useful, at least for me, uh, is that in the past I've tried to use high-speed GPS, uh, especially in drag race cars because acceleration rate's high, uh, to try to indicate track position. Uh, and the position of the car on the racetrack at bumps, and where you want things to happen compared to the starting line. Now, traditionally this is done using a timer, um, but as we all know, a timer can be uh, fairly far off of reality, assuming the car doesn't do exactly what you intend it to do in the time it, it's supposed to do it in. So the track position method of controlling things like nitrous stages or you know where boost uh, or shift points happen especially based on uh, the, the surface of the racetrack you're trying to run on, is done a lot better using global position system. However, the problem with GPS is, um, particularly fast GPS, uh, GPS is always trying to take data from the satellite that's got a timestamp on it, and it's trying to reorder that data and that timestamp to determine its position relative to those satellites. Uh, and, and so the problem becomes there's lots of messages coming in from the satellites to the GPS receiver, and the GPS receiver has to filter out uh, errant signals. So in other words, if it gets two signals that came from the GPS satellite uh, at the same timestamp, it has to decide which one's real and which one's bullshit. And it can get bullshit signals from, you know, errant signals bouncing off of things around the GPS unit, like the top of the car or a wing or a building or a grandstand or trees or other things like that, which makes GPS inherently slow because it has to spend all that time, the GPS unit, filtering that data. If it doesn't filter that data, well, then you just get bullshit position info that's got jumps in it and, and wiggles. Uh, and so the concept is uh, to use an inertial navigation system in conjunction with the GPS so that the GPS signal can be, can be monitored at a relatively slow rate from the satellites so that appropriate filtering can be done to, to uh, help accuracy. And then the inertial navigation system consisting of accelerometers in all three axes uh, and uh, uh, magnetometers, and there's something else in there too that's a big word which I can't remember. Um, but basically what it is is a bunch of gyros and, and accelerometers with software on board working together uh, to figure out the change in position from a start point. 
So the inertial navigation system part of it is not good or able to determine its position on the Earth. The GPS is very good and very well suited for determining position on the Earth. So the concept is to marry the two and output a signal which is high speed and high accuracy for something like a data logger or for an engine management system to do controls. In this case, we're going to be using it for traction control and some other uh, various controls on a land speed racing car which races on uh, asphalt or concrete, a standing mile. Um, the 10 hertz GPS that we use at Bonneville, say on Speed Demon, is plenty accurate and plenty consistent enough uh, somewhere where the acceleration rate is relatively low. GPS has a hard time with high acceleration rates, i.e. drag racing or even uh, potentially land speed racing on asphalt where the acceleration might exceed 1G. On the salt, we rarely ever see 1G of acceleration. Uh, normally we would see something like half to three quarters of a G because we just don't have the bite to, pre to provide that sort of acceleration on salt. Um, so the Obsidian uh, INS, which is again a GPS slash inertial navigation system combined, uh, should give us the data we need to use even on a drag car. Uh, it also comes with this uh, antenna assembly, which you can clearly see has a ground plane on it and the ground plane, a magnet and a ground plane. So the ground plane serves as effectively a, a filter, if you want, uh, for the bottom of the receiver so that, again, errant signals uh, can bounce off the steel and the, the receiver has a better line of sight to the, uh, to the satellites without, without errors that can be compounded by uh, errant signals bouncing off of devices around, around the vehicle. Now, I have a car, a couple actually, that run GPS high speed uh, at 100 hertz, uh, and I have data from them. And I actually have data up on my screen, which will probably require me to uh, turn it a bit and also zoom the camera. So I'll get up and do that. And you can see the problem that, that I face with the GPS only solution, which is that uh, on some runs, you get really clean and clear data traces. And on other runs, you get extremely wiggly uh, data traces with steps and drops and all kinds of things like that, and which are not terribly useful and obviously mix you up for trying to determine position on the racetrack. So the expectation, of course, is that with the Obsidian GPS slash INS unit outputting a signal to the ECU at 400 times per second over CAN, uh, we should be able to smooth out that signal and make it much more useful. Now, Obsidian isn't the only company that makes GPS slash INS units, um, but as far as I know, they are the only company that's making an automotive grade version that is immediately uh, importable into the MoTeC data system and the engine management system, the M1 system. They output messaging over CAN that mimics the uh, GPS messages that the MoTeC devices already know how to receive. And they offer code to put into custom firmware packages like I use to be able to uh, read the GPS signals and the INS information directly from the unit uh, and do things with it in the, in the, uh, in the software. So there's a, there's a couple other companies that are, offer uh, automotive or racing grade versions, but nobody has one that just simply drops right into what uh, MoTeC can, can read. And obviously, because it outputs messages on a CAN bus, any kind of a system which can read CAN messages um, can have a CAN template provided that will allow the signals from the Obsidian INS GPS unit and import that information straight into the controller or the logger. So, I'm looking forward to using this device, uh, and I'm excited to have it. And at some point, maybe I'll be able to share some some really cool 400 hertz uh, data from the uh, from the GPS INS unit from Obsidian. For now, I guess that's all I have to offer. That's my uh, that's my unboxing video on the Obsidian Motorsport Group, and you can find them on the internet, ObsidianMotorsport.com. I guess might be on the box possibly.
No, instead we have a warning for using static free gloves to touch this unit, which no one is ever going to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, so listen, if you like this video, uh, give it a like, give it a share. Obviously go check out Obsidian Motorsport Group and see what other great products they have to offer. And uh, yeah, if you want to support me, uh, you can follow me on Facebook, you can follow me on uh, Instagram, Tuned by Shane T, at both YouTube, Tuned by Shane T. You can go to tunedbyshanet.com and go to my store and buy a t-shirt from me. And that will help support my cause. So uh, I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to doing the, uh, the next unboxing video when I have something exciting to unbox. So I think that's it for now. Bye, everybody.